a bad name to Hail Mary's everywhere. Leader fan. Fan Radio Network. No way! And K-F-A-N. Dot com. Three minutes, 15 seconds past three o'clock central daylight time. Welcome back. It's a Monday edition of the Bumper to Bumper program on a uh, summary. Almost November weekday afternoon here in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. I host the program. My name is Dan Barrero. Guards, he produces. And uh, we are going to be going the distance today. I think we're three to six thirty. Is that correct? A full show today? Yes. Out early tomorrow, but today we today, are 6 30. We are going the distance. We've got uh, three, count them, three outstanding guests. We'll give you details on that later in the broadcast. We'll remind you that the Bradshaw and Brian KFN text line is already, it's already red hot. 64686. That's the Bradshaw and Bryant KFAN text line. I, um, uh, I got to tell you, this isn't Bears wine line. We're not turning the show over to Lavelle E. Neal III. But it's fairly hard to escape what has become, I think, pretty much a national story. Yeah, in Washington, they're celebrating it on the emotional level. The Washington commanders dead to rights after having dominated Look how good the NFC North, from a record standpoint, was going to be. The Bears on the brink of improving to five and two. What are the uh, Vikings? Five and two. Five and two. That, that's and that's the worst record in the division, right? Yeah. Packers had won again. Lions had won again, and the Bears are on the verge of stealing one that they had no business winning. In Washington, did nothing offensively for three quarters, and then they make the comeback, and then you get to the uh, the Hail Mary play. And I say it gives a bad that Hail Mary gives a bad name to Hail Marys historically because that had to be the easiest Hail Mary in history. Had to be the in the end, despite it being yeah a miracle play, your last gasp, your last chance. Uh, that the only tough part about that catch, I guess, was you better not flub it. Don't right? screw it you up. Do not screw it up. But the ball, by the time it reaches the hands of the receiver, has been deadened to such a great degree. There's no English on it. I don't think there's any sort of weird spin on it. I think any of us would have caught that pass. I really do. I think pretty much anybody would have been able to catch it. And you'd like to associate some. Difficulty, degree of difficulty with most of the famous and infamous in this town, Hail Marys, right? Um, we had, we at least can say, uh, we're associated with the original. It started and it all. It started it all. Although, it, when we think of Hail Mary today, we think pretty much of a ball that's going to be thrown into the end zone, right? And right. then a number of offensive and defensive players are going to grapple for it. And, hell, your guy A-Rod, he just did one, was it a week ago? At halftime? Yep. And it was, at least you could say, I mean, you could say even then it shouldn't have happened. I don't remember who the who the Jets were playing. You'd say, well, that can't happen. But you could say, well, the receiver just went up a little higher and made a hell of a play, right? A hell of a play under the circumstances. There were other people trying to kind of get to the ball. <laughs> In this case, it was ridiculously easy. Perhaps the easiest Hail Mary I have ever seen. And I I know we think we have been intimidated, maybe not as much as baseball fans, but I think that football fans have been intimidated into believing that we can't possibly comprehend the complications and the nuances that go into the all twenty two. Right, correct? Right. It's like it's impossible. You you yeah, you think you could call the plays better, you think you could do this better, you think you could do that better. You have no idea just how complicated and intricate and challenging the game has become, right? Now especially where it's a much more sophisticated passing game than it used to be. 
That said, I'm going to ask you, the, the, the most underrated aspect of the insanity of the dysfunction of the Bears that has been discussed, to me, we need to spend almost the whole show on. And it's going to sound weird because there were so many breakdowns, obviously. Uh, kudos again. I mean, Romo called it. Yeah. Right? Romo was right on that series. People get annoyed with Romo. Sometimes I get annoyed with Romo. I still know, believe he largely knows what he's talking he about does. and what he's doing. Yes. And what did he say? Don't throw the Hail Mary yet. Get yourself 10 to 12 more yards. Right? I mean, flat out. He said you got it because you have to have a chance to get the ball to the end zone. Correct. Although the original Hail, Hail Mary was not to the end zone. No. Right? The Drew Pearson play. Right. But generally, that's what we think of. That's what you're looking for there because... If you can get it to the end zone, you don't have to worry about being tackled in 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 play, short right? Where line, you're yep. short of the goal line, and yeah, I, and the hail mary is caught at the twelve. He's brought down at the six, and the game is over. Right? Doesn't do you much good. You can no. get excited about it. Doesn't matter. So he calls that, and as I, as he says it, I'm looking up and I'm going, where are the defenders? And the Bears have obviously decided that they're either assuming it's going to be a Hail Mary already, or they don't. They claim, as the head coach, who remarkably still has a job, Matt Eberflus, says, not going to worry about that. We'll, we'll, we'll throw you a bone. Take your 12 yards. You know, we're happy for you, right? And I don't know how many yards did he end up with. About 12? Yeah. He's in that range. It was. 12 yards in that situation, even for a quarterback who has the cannon arm that Daniels does, Big difference, right? Big, because as it is, the ball did not get to the end zone. The ball got to inside, I think, I want to say about the five, and then got tipped back. So there you are, Romo pretty much calling it that that opened the door to the possibility that you got something going. We'll leave aside for the moment <laughs> the fact that the Bears had three timeouts. Most teams say, I want to take, I want to, let's take a deep breath here. Let's get organized. Let's take a long, hard look at what we're doing. Let's be sure we're on the same page. Let's grab the cornerback that's already peacocking to the fans. Well, that's it, too. But even, but even before then, but if you see, but I don't even think the, 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 the Bears coaches were paying enough attention to see that they have a cornerback, as you say, not only peacocking. His back is to the play as it has already begun. His back is to the, pl to the action. Like you think you'd see, like in a in a Sandlot game, right, where somebody's playing with the crowd. It doesn't really matter because it's a Sandlot game. Yep. Let's leave all that as hard as it is to the to the side for the moment. The fact that then the cardinal rule broken that nobody, if you're not going to take the timeout, if you're not going to try to get the attention of your peacocking defensive back, you remind your 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 defensive backs one of you has to be behind everybody else has to be behind everybody else. In case the ball does get tipped the wrong way, you can at least defend on the play, right? Maybe knock the ball down. Interfere with the receiver. Pass interference is never called in that situation. You can do. You can mug a receiver in that situation. Let's leave all that aside for the moment. You know what was the most preposterous part of it to me? And I didn't notice this at first. It was brought to my attention by great football minds. I don't remember which one it was. If you watch that play as it develops and you watch Daniels by time, there is a Bears linebacker who, as Daniels is going 15 yards back from the line of scrimmage, as Daniels is going side to side, he too is going side to side. Do you know what he was doing? I don't. Spying Daniels. Now, if it's the third quarter and it's third and 12 and you're worried about Daniels getting 15 yards on a scramble because the guy's a ridiculous runner, it makes sense to have, well, we're going to spy him. Right. That's your job. You don't worry about anything else. You spy him. But what the hell point is there of being a spy in that situation? You are effectively reducing your chances to put pressure on because you have become an irrelevant ball player. You're not deep to try to help defend the pass. You're not at the line of scrimmage trying to put pressure on. You're going 15 yards. Watch the play. 
as Daniels keeps you know retreating and going back, he's just going okay. I'm now I'm on that side of the field. I'm still. Am I spying him right, Coach? I'm on him just in case he decides to take off and scramble for seventy yards for a touchdown. I've got him. How is that alone? Not fireable. You tell me. In all seriousness, I can't. Does that make any sense? There's about six fireable offenses oh in that God. last it's, couple of plays. It's too good. And for Vikings fans, I'm sure I don't blame you at all for loving the ambulance chasing. Right? I mean, you. You. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, we've been through it. Maybe not that exactly, but a lot of things similar. Uh, you know, victory assured. We find a way to choke it or to lose it. It's wonderful to be able to watch the fan base of another team melt down and say, how can this happen? How is this possible? I appreciate and have no problem with your schadenfreude moment. The fan and two men and a junk truck want to give you a shot to put a grain in your hand with our national cash contest. Our first keyword of the week here is deposit. Go to KFAN.com and enter the keyword deposit. He's just going to have to let one fly. Go to the right side. Steps away from the defender. Gives himself some time. Now steps up, fires, heads towards the end zone. It is. Oh, oh, it's 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 Is John Riggins one of the uh, voices of the of the Commanders? I'm not sure. I'll look it up. I understood about nine of the words yeah. in that whole thing, but it didn't matter. You knew exactly what took place. Uh, so, uh, an all-22 expert says the spy is designed to be a late blitzer, Dan, after the defensive lineman. Well, how late do you want rush. him to go? I, I had 13 I, seconds. 612 guy, if you check the tape, he never blitzed. <laughs> he never came close. He just kept going side to side like, well, that's my responsibility. And somebody said, well, if anybody can go 75 yards, it's him. I get it. He might be the greatest running quarterback of all time. Well, he's going to get killed. I, I have no doubt. I, I, I'm not rooting for it, but I think he's on borrowed time. I, re- I really do. I, I, I don't think there's any way around it. Um, Bram Weinstein and London Fletcher, your Washington commander's okay, booth. Fair enough. On WBIG. WBIG. Um, no, you can't spy in that. T- I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's the spy, lack of use of timeouts, the fact that <laughs> your, your own, even if you didn't intend to use the timeouts, that your coaching staff isn't aware enough of, we got to, de- we got a guy playing with the crowd here. We got to get him. We got to get every get everybody time out. Let's get everybody over here. The game's not over. Stop messing with the crowd. Mess with the crowd when the final buzzer. Well, there's no buzzer in football, is there? When time has elapsed, triple zeros. Yes, and it's over. You want to feel worse? Yeah. I didn't stick around long enough to actually see this, but everybody's been spending a lot of time on the second to last play as well, where they just gave him yes. 12 or 13 yards. And Ibra Flues basically said that didn't matter. Didn't matter, which, which, is, which is fireable. Also asinine. Correct. But Orlovsky claims that your cornerback was also doing that on that play. <laughs> so he just took the whole series off. Stevenson, I think. Is yes. Yeah. He said, no, no one's really talking about it yet, but we're going to show you that he was also oh. Going off on the crowd on the first play oh. that got them into Hail Mary range. And Orlovsky also mentioned, he said, the number one rule if you're going to do a Hail Mary is can we get it there? He says, yes. you don't throw it if you don't get it there. Right. And just giving them the 12 yards or whatever it was gave them at least that option where they wouldn't have to do the lateral play, which rarely ever works. And the, the rest is history. Yeah, I mean... As it is, as I said, I think the pass landed at the five. Well, I think when they went up in the air, it was about the five. It was not in the end zone. But then if you are you put that back to the 15 or 20, it's not, a, well, I, I'm about to say then you're not going to score there. But given that circumstance and how badly the Bears handled it, 
I, I'm here to tell you, the guy might have he might have been able to like backpedal into the end zone. <laughs> yeah, there's nobody. There was nobody near him. Right? He even gave a little bit of a subtle shove, nothing callable to separate himself from the scrum. And then it's like, boop, boop, there you go. Ball's going to uh, drop in. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll be remembering that in Washington for a long time. We'll be remembering that in Chicago for a long time. And so for the moment, we're not in last place, right? The Bears at four and three are in last place in the incredibly competitive, robust National Football Conference North. Everybody else, well, the other two teams won, right? Yep. The uh, Packers, although the Packers, did they get any kind of update today on their QB? Because even their head coach expressed concern about his groin injury. The update I saw was Jordan that Love. it's not terrible news. Oh. He's actually going to be more day-to-day and has a chance of playing on Sunday. Here's what you wonder, though, with him. You start you start accruing these injuries, the right? And then you start cumulative. going exactly where he's in, he's out, is he not quite the same? Uh, you know, it. that's the cruelty of the game of football is you play with them because you're a gamer and because they need you and you're supposed to do it, but they could end up having a cumulative effect for sure. And the Lions... What was the stat I saw? They had five touchdowns in the first half and like 28 yards passing, which didn't even seem possible. But they had special team success. Um, who's the running back who threw a, threw a touchdown pass on the option? Not the speed burner. Not Montgomery. Montgomery. Uh, they had a great special teams play as well. They didn't even need Goff to do no. all that much. So they uh, continue to uh, lead the division. And my guess is because of the way they're playing – um, I think they've scored their last, is it their last four games they've scored 25 touchdowns? Is that possible? Well, here, I'll give you some numbers here. All right. And they would check out with that. They've won five straight. They've averaged 40 plus over the last four. And this is the best seven game record since 1956. So averaging 40 plus over the last yeah. four, you do the math, yeah, adding up yeah. the touchdowns, it would make sense. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty good. Um, so 12 of 15, 85 yards is what Goff had yesterday. That's what he finished with. And it didn't matter. No. I think he's got like nine incompletions for the last two months or something. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, uh, a couple people, a 612 guy, it's just a regular, why are people losing their minds? It's just a regular season game. I, well, I don't know what to say to 612 guy. Did you know it was a regular season game, not a playoff game? I knew the the calendar. It's I, late yeah, October. It, it's, it's such, but it's it's such an unusual circumstance and has so many fascinating elements to it. And like I said, I has somebody done the? I mean, there's a statistic and analytic for everything. Has somebody attempted to catalog all of the hail marys for like the last fifty? I mean, if we if we asked for at a moment's notice, I want in a list all Hail Marys for the last 50 years. How many would there be? Good question. I wonder, would it be like 100? Would it be more than we think? Would it be, tw- I guess you have to define what a Hail Mary is, how many yards it has to be. Um, but it's still a, it's a highly unusual play. And I, I dare say that no matter how many there were, I'm going to say there's never been one in which, as the play began, one of the defensive players was literally turned away from the action. That's got to be, that in of itself is what makes this worth talking about. It doesn't matter who it, who it involves. That is the ultimate. And maybe it's inevitable that we were going to get on this road because we've got players who do more and more of this all the time, yeah. right? So maybe we shouldn't be all that surprised about it, but I can't. I mean, maybe I bet you there's been celebrating on the sidelines before. For sure. But that a player who is in the action um to involve himself the way he did and to not just be working the crowd, but to be as he's doing it, like I said, facing the sidelines. He's facing the stands away from the field. His back. Right. The play has begun. Daniels is scrambling already, and he doesn't know it. And then suddenly he turns on, go, oh! 
And then he probably does what he's not supposed to do, which is to get in the middle of the play as opposed to, you right. know, everybody's got a job. It's like, do your job on that play, right? Allegedly, every well, we know Spy Guy had his job. He was doing his job. Allegedly, everybody has a job. And he was so far away, too. <laughs> yes, he was. That he had to completely had to, yeah. scramble and sprint over there, which made it worse, as you mentioned. I think he may have even been out, out, like out of bounds, like away from the... He wasn't even inside the playing lines when he was turned away or pretty close. How do you think he realized the play was going? Do you think somebody pointed? Do you think he just heard the crowd? Or do you just think he I, happened I to know. turn around and then realize that everybody was 25 yards over to his right? <laughs> what do you... In all honesty... I'm trying to figure out what Mike Ditka oh. would do to that player as a coach. Well, first of all, as a player, but then as a coach. What would Ditka do to that player? Now, I'd like to think he'd say it wouldn't happen. There'd be, there's right. a, there'd be enough discipline on the team. And then, by the way, and that's the other thing, there was all kinds of stupid penalties, mainly by the Bears again, that do not show signs of great coaching or great understanding of we got certain standards that we want to uphold. Allegedly... The kid, and he's a good, good young, promising corner. Yep, uh, was going to address the team today. But what's he going to say? I mean, other than yeah, he sent out a tweet, sent last, out a tweet night. last night. I think I did see like a Zoom video. I think also where he you know fell on the sword, which he should. There's not like you said. There's nothing you can do. You just have to own it and wear it, and hopefully get better from it. Uh, by the way, it, it it you know we believe in history on this show, and um, Dan Winnesota reminds us that today's a Red Letter Day on the Minnesota sports calendar of Calamity. And one of those plays, believe it or not, is a Hail Mary that came at our expense. It wasn't, obviously, the Roger Staubach, um, Drew Pearson play. But it's another one. We even have the sound from that. We'll get into some calendar stuff. Uh, we'll continue with some football conversation. And we got a lot of other ground to cover. Let's also remind you that uh, Johnny Athletics is going to join us today at 402, Ben Lieber, 447, and uh, Viking Safety Cam Bynum, 515. I got to believe this is a subject that will be good to talk about with Bynum, right? I mean, what the what rules govern what defensive backs are? I mean, I know he's competitive. I'm guessing he enjoyed that the Bears lost, but I wonder if there was any of that, you know, sort of um, empathy that goes Brother like, in def- arms yeah, defender. defensive back to defensive back going, Oh, God, what a nightmare. What a worst-case scenario. So uh, we may discuss that. On the other hand, he may say, look, we've got enough problems on our own right now. Uh, but he will check in with us probably right after the top five. The Hail Mary expression apparently goes all the way back to the 30s. Used publicly by two members. I think these were your two favorite members of Notre Dame's uh, Four Horsemen. You were big on Elmer Layden and Jim Crowley, weren't you? I love Layden. They were both members of the Four Horsemen, and apparently they used it publicly a couple times. Originally meaning any sort of desperation play, a Hail Mary pass gradually came to denote a long, low-probability pass, typically of the alley-oop variety, attempted either at the end of the half, when a team is too far from the end zone to execute a more conventional play, or obviously at the uh, end of a game as well, became more widespread, they acknowledge, after the December 28, 1975 game between the Dallas Cowboys and your Minnesota Vikings, the famous quote from Roger Staubach, I closed my eyes and said a Hail Mary. The stories a stadium could tell. Um, wow, this is really deep. I mentioned Crowley before. October 28, 1922, Notre Dame and, G- and Georgia Tech. It's all about Notre Dame. <laughs> it Touchdown is amazing Jesus. how everything comes back it to It all them. comes back to Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish players said Hail Mary prayers together before scoring each of their touchdowns, before winning the game 13-3. to One of the team's linemen, a Presbyterian no less, was the one who suggested praying before the first touchdown, which occurred on a fourth and goal play at the Georgia Tech 6. So that it, it's, it's, it meant something very different then. Obviously. Um, Is it fair to say that the single most famous, most dramatic Hail Mary pass took place on November 23rd, 
1984. You know which one I'm talking about there? That's got to be Doug Flutie, right? That's it. The Hale Flutie BC game. They're trailing Miami 45 to 41, six seconds to go. And Flutie throws a 63 yard touchdown pass to Gerard Phelan. Largely because uh, Miami's secondary stood in the goal line to keep the receivers in front of them without covering a post route behind them. That's a big one. That was, I remember that one well. I was working in Dallas at the time. I was not covering, but uh, I do remember, I mean, that given the stakes, because it had all sorts of even postseason implications, that was an awfully big uh, miracle. I mean, play. That, that one has to be towards the... Uh, top of the list. And I, I mean, Wikipedia has a list of some of the most uh, famous ones as well. And there's, you know, again, there's more than you, you'd think. And they even include week six, Monday night game, Buffalo Jets, October 14, 2024. They've already got it updated. It's already updated. Rodgers throws a 52 yard deep pass to Alan Lazard into the end zone, crowded around the Bills defense. You'll recall, too, that was originally a ruled incomplete and then was checked and it was a, it was a good catch it Gotta was get it right. they, they did get that one right and they're already have you seen the headline what they what they're already calling what took place yesterday in Washington in Washington it's got hail on there right well there's a couple of different ones this one is the madhouse in Maryland that's trying awfully hard for the the alliteration Believe. the madhouse in Maryland that one is already up uh, in military uses it always seems shaky to mix football and military but and i don't remember this general norm schwarzkopf your guy described his strategy during the persian gulf war to bypass the bulk of iraqi forces in kuwait by attacking in a wide left sweep through their rear as a hail mary plan the usage in that case however did not refer to the plan's chances of success but to the movement of coalition forces to the left side of the front lines pr- lines prior to the attack which reflected the formation for a Hail Mary pass. Oh, sure. In which all the offensive team's wide receivers line up on one side of the line of scrimmage. Now, as it turns out, it's calendar of calamity day. And by pure coincidence, one of there's two huge calendar. Actually, there's three good ones, but two football cataclysmic football ones for this date. What's the date today? 25th? 28th. 28th of uh, October. And um, we've talked about this game before, much to Glenn Mason's delight. Are you nuts? And it's it's an underrated meltdown because it involves, this. the year I believe was 2000, so yes. 24 years ago on this date, Northwestern is playing the Gophers at the Metrodome. Football. And... Gophers build a, I believe it was 35-14 lead. Are you nuts? In the second half with like, I don't know, five or six minutes to go in the third quarter. Northwestern comes all the way back to tie it in regulation, 35-35. In fact, they convert on five fourth downs during the comeback. And Gophers have the ball... Their clock management, not great on what they, you know, do they do we try to score, not try to score? Well, they didn't get a first down. Northwestern takes a timeout. They force a gopher punt. And I think Northwestern takes over, what would you say, near the midfield? Somewhere in that range? Yeah, I'm actually going to pull up the play-by-play. Yeah, we'll pull find up the play-by-play, it. right? It's, it's got to be like 45, maybe 50-yard line. And there's time for one play. Basically, at this point, we're down. I guess we should say we're down to one play. Now, again, it's tied. Now, in 2000, did we have, we already had play, we already had, um, we didn't leave the game a tie in regulation. Overtime? Did, did we have overtime? Or is that is that before overtime? Man, is? that might be before maybe, overtime. Maybe it was. I'm not sure. But I don't know for sure. All I know is um, Northwestern has one last chance to either you know, t- turn t- take the game into OT or to avoid having to come back all that way and settle for a tie. And here's what happened. All they can do now is throw it deep and hope for a miracle or 
a penalty. Kustak to the end zone for the win. Caught! Touchdown! Northwestern wins it! Northwestern wins it! Sam Simmons made the catch! The Wildcats do it! Sam Simmons made the catch! The ball was deflected! So, what makes this particular um, Hail Mary interesting is it was sort of towards the corner of the end zone. When I say corner, just past the goal line, but right. towards the right side. Front right corner. Front right corner. And in this case, <laughs> I didn't even know where the gopher defenders were because it looked like it was it went exactly how Northwestern envisioned it or might have planned it. They had one of their own defenders purposefully tip it to another receiver a little further back in the end zone, and he catches it just as he crosses the goal line. So he's in the end zone, he catches it, and then he ends up on the two-yard line, but because he catches in the end zone, touchdown, end of game. And the next thing you see, you can find this via YouTube pretty easily, uh, the look on Glenn Mason's face. How would you describe it? It's just, I think most Gopher fans remember it because we saw it yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's just that, did that really happen kind of look? His headset is off and he's just standing there going, really? This is how this is going to go down? And that's how it went down. And that's how it went down. You say you remember get walking into your place, like yes. coming out of the car? What, I mean, had, did you, so did you... Turn on the TV, see the play as it happened yes, live? Yes, that's what I remember. Okay. I was a senior in high school, All right. and this was a Saturday, obviously, and that used to be when the girls' state tennis tournament, I think individual finals were. And I remember being at the individual finals that okay. morning, watching friends of mine, right, getting in the car, probably listening to the game, and then rushing into my parents' place or our family's house, Flipping it on in the living room, seeing how they lost, and turning it off in utter disbelief that they let another game happen like that. Because we'd already, we hadn't had Michigan yet. This predates the Michigan meltdown, but we'd had yes. some other games. Yes, we did. We're we had get some to other games that happened also on this same date. That and was the same season that they beat Ohio State, 2000. Is that right? Yeah, I'm looking at the that schedule. Way. That was their second straight loss. They lost to the Hoosiers the week before. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they. They go to they go to Columbus, dominate Ohio State, basically end John Cooper's career. Yep, you were there for that I one. I was there for that one. I was also then the next week they had uh they they traveled to Bloomington to take on Indiana. They get I want to say semi killed. I think they gave up over 40. It was 51-43. Yeah, and that was uh Antoine Randall. Antoine Randall was a hell of a player. I didn't I guess I didn't associate Northwestern with that same that with that same season. And then they lost they got crushed by Wisconsin the next week before beating Iowa yeah. to get bowl eligible. They finished that season six and six. And that's when they speaking of meltdowns, lost a big lead oh, yeah. to In NC State. Right. I think Phillip Rivers. Right. Thirty eight to thirty when they were up big. Corn Robinson was well, on I that team. I think at the time that was the worst collapse. I think In the you might be right. Football. I think it's been matched or maybe even surpassed since. Um, I was in St. Cloud for that game, getting ready for the Granite City Classic High School Basketball Hoops Tournament. <laughs> it's funny what you remember where you were when you watched these meltdowns. Well, the other story, Mace doesn't like me when I remind him, but the, the, the back story was that, that Zach Kustock was looking for a team. Yeah. At one point. He went to the office. Went during the summer to, to basically offer himself his services up to the, to the Gophers and Mace claims either he wasn't available or he doesn't remember it happening. But Kustak, now Kustak was not a great quarterback, but he was good. He's a good player. He made he made a lot of uh, significant plays. I don't remember who who was our quarterback that year. We went through a couple. I think. Yeah, I think you're probably year. right. So, um, but here's the here's the kicker. This same date, October 28, eleven years before that, 1989. We had another, this wasn't an, a, a, a Hail Mary finish, another historic collapse at the time was tied for the largest comeback um, ever. Tied the NCAA Division I a record at the time. 
It was the Gophers hosting Ohio State. And the Gophers were up 31 to nothing. And I vivid I was at that game and I vividly remember Ohio State scored late in the half, I believe. And they hit a two-point conversion. I think the halftime score was 31 to 8. And I vividly remember Sid looking at me and saying, they're going to regret that touchdown. Ohio State's going to come back and win this game. And we all mocked him. Because even by gopher standards, that's that's too much. That's not going to happen. And guess what? It did. Gophers lost that game 41 to 37. In fact, Gophers had a late chance to steal it. And I don't remember the name of the receiver. It was a catchable ball in the end zone that he did not hold on to that would have saved the victory for the Gophers. They lose 41-37. Ohio State turned the ball over six times. Wow. And still won. So when it comes to drama, it's hard to top what your favorite college football team has done uh, going back a number of years, right? The the Michigan meltdown, the Northwestern meltdown, Purdue. the Purdue meltdown. I can't forget that one. You're 100% right. We know about the bowl games, although he, NC State. Although, uh, Mace blames that on the um, clock, operator. clock operator who should have been fired. And then, as you mentioned, the bowl game and, and this Ohio State game as well. And then that's the, the Mace's last game, the Texas Tech game. That was another meltdown oh, yeah, where they right. gave up a big lead. That's right. That's true, too. And you all wondered why P.J. Fleck kept his starters in ridiculously yeah, long on, yeah. on Saturday. You were ready to pounce on them when people started getting hurt, or if they got hurt, right? <laughs> a couple of starters might have gotten dinged up. Unbelievable. But he has all that in his back pocket. Uh, three in a row for your Gophers. I did spend, uh, you had Gopher football Sunday back Sunday, so you, you spent obviously an hour on it. And I spent uh, some time on it, too, that we can now uh, put total, completely to bed, right? If nothing else. Uh, put to bed that the Gophers made a an iffy trade going from Kelly Manis to Brosmer. Brosmer has been a clear upgrade as a passer. Um, and I'm trying to figure out whether the lesson of this, because Brosmer can only be here one year, correct? Right. Is there, no, you sure he can't petition? I'm pretty sure he cannot. What if he got hurt? I'm not, you know, I'm not begging for that, but... Let's say he got hurt. And I think his he's season played too ended. many games. Could he? Could they say no? We're going to petition for a ninth year or tenth year, whatever. No, it would be? I think he's past That's the threshold. Bad. That's too bad because you like to get two years out of this. But here's the question for you: because he has been good to very good. This last game was his best game. We'll all agree, right? He was great. Yeah. Um, no picks. Accurate as hell. Slinging the ball. The field. Weren't we in the minus? Number on, on, on rushing yards for a while. For a while, we're, and it doesn't matter all of a sudden because we're flinging it. Somebody needs to tell the TV announcers, by the way, that it's you know we haven't been running the ball all year, but whatever. Um, is the lesson here there's that there is a breakthrough that Brosmer represents that the head coach is now convinced? Yes, yes, I will make the adjustment. I've seen it happen with my own eyes. If we get the right QB. And maybe the right coordinator. Maybe that's you tell me that's an underrated part of it. Um, we do not have to be the running team that I prefer that we are. Or is it no? This is the only guy he will he will trust. That's what we got to find out. That's what we have to find out because it's pretty obvious he trusts him implicitly. He lets him do pretty much everything. He's told us multiple times. Yes, he allows him to do things at the line of scrimmage that he's never. It's not like he's coached for 50 years, but he's coached a decade plus now. He's had multiple quarterbacks. And so, yeah, he he trusts this guy 100, 1,000%. Sure. Yeah. And you know who else you need to get the memo to about the Gophers running the ball is Big Ten head coaches. I talked about it yesterday. I was stunned when I read Mike Loxley's quotes after the game. Yes, yes. We talk, We did talk about that, too. Where he said, yeah. we were not going to let him run the ball. And I'm like, which... What are you watching? And that's no shade on anybody, but they haven't run the ball well. No. And Brosmer is their best player right now. Brosmer is playing out of his mind, and you have a bad pass defense. Yes. So why wouldn't you be helping that way as opposed to we were not going to get beat running the ball? It just didn't make a ton of sense to me. Gophers will take it, obviously, because save for that little stretch in the second quarter when they tried to run it and Maryland was going to stop them with all yes. those run blitzes and things like that. 
they just said, we're just going to pick you apart and we're just going to let Max do his thing. And I, he was great. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because it looked to me like they were lining up in a way like, that they still expected this to be, I don't know, any of the last three or four years. And they're, we're going to load up. We're going we're gonna to make them prove to us they can throw. Seems and weird. It's, it's bizarre. I, I mean, you could almost say it with announcers. Well, they're busy and they're right. gonna, they, 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 national, my biggest gripe with national announcers in general when they have to do a local game is the degree to which they just simply f- remember what the narrative is they've heard about that team forever and ever. As opposed to, well, is that still the same this year? What, what, what I mean, what are we really seeing? Cause, it's a great angle to cover, is it not? That well, that's been their 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 personality, right? But look, lo and behold, this is different this year, and yet there's a reluctance. I don't even know what it. I, 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 there were two or three times. Well, you know what the Govers want to do? They want to run. Well, they kind of do. They yeah. probably still do want to run. Yep, and they have Darius Taylor. Yeah, and and but even that's changed. Where you go? Well, Taylor's featured, but they're featuring more in the in the passing game. That's become even for Taylor a better way for him uh, to get involved. But when it's coaches who presumably are doing scouting reports going, yeah, let's test this Q- this QB. <laughs> I mean, let's find out what he can, what he, what the guy he can completing do. The completing 70% of his passes yeah. with drops. Yeah. So we've won three in a row. For Boudreaux. And, and now we're in the meat of it because we've got at Illinois next. Timing's not probably great. Illinois just got humiliated by Oregon. So you know... You're going to get the best they have to offer. We've never beaten Bielema. Right. Correct? Right. They're well, a little banged up, coaching. Is it, well, that's They got banged up well, out in Oregon. They're vulnerable, you would say, right, at this point. And Bernsey told me the line started two points Illinois' way, that Illinois was favored by two. I haven't checked it today, but this morning, Bernsey told me that it has swung already. Gophers are favored or Is were favored right? by a point or two. Some of that might be the injuries. That must be the injuries. But, yeah, so that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. So, and then who do we have after um, uh, Rutgers on the road? Rutgers on the road. Oh, that's, that's a lot of storylines. That's Callie Manis. It's Callie Manis. It's Sharaka. Yeah, you're right. A lot of storylines in that one. And what else after that? Then there's a bye. Then Penn State comes here, and then, and then Wisconsin. Wisconsin. There's yeah. only four left. Okay, four left. Yeah. One home game. Interesting. And we have uh, what's that? We have two Big Ten losses or three? We have three. That's right. We have three. So that's the thing. We that's. Well, like I said, they've opened the door to this being a successful season. No, we have two. We have Iowa and That's Wisconsin. That's what I thought. We have three overall. Iowa Carolina was the other yeah. loss, right? Yeah. So, um, I, th- in my head. I think it's going to be hard to um, make the Big Ten title game under these conditions. But, nevertheless, you can still have a very good regular Big Ten season if you can get on some kind of a roll here now. It would be you, nice to be a ranked the, Illinois team at yeah, their you've, place. You've opened the door. Yeah. At least. That's what you've done by winning... Uh, three games in a row. I mean, you're not the Hoosiers. I mean, but not everybody can. Who be. can hope to be the Hoosiers? I appreciate you sent me a link to another website, although I've been on that one too, uh, that has a little bit more throwback stuff. I know you're looking for the block eye. I am, but and I'm but I'm so particular that the block eye items uh, block eye items they have don't work for me. You don't even want the state in the block eye? Because no, there's an eye with the state of Indiana. It's too busy. Too much. It's, it's too much. There's just too much going. But I am waiting. I'm supposed to get a Wednesday my uh, uh, Hoosier football, Indiana University football, black hoodie with kind of like the uh, crimson oh, lettering yeah. as well, which is a little bit, you know, a little bit on the different side. Why not? So well, I'm looking forward to that. So that's my doubleheader Saturday, right? Back to back, just like this last week, except the orders reverse. First would be Gophers, uh, early game, and then the Hoosiers are in Michigan at Michigan State at uh, two. Don't sleep on the Spartans. I'm not sleeping on anybody. I honestly, I don't. Uh, I think. I think the Indiana is like a six point favorite, which that sounds about right. Outlandish to me. And then they've got Michigan. Then they've got a bye, and then they've got Ohio State. And by the way, bring it on. Why can't they beat the Buckeyes? Buckeyes barely survived Nebraska. Nebraska just hung with them. Yeah, it's going to be a wild month. It's already been a wild college football well, season. I have a theory I want to run by regarding more generally on college football that we'll save either for later this show or another day that we discussed on uh, sermons. And uh, we do have guests, though, the rest of the way. That includes uh, Cam Bynum at 515, Ben Lieber a little less than an hour from now. And when we come back, how about uh, a checkup or checking in with our guy, John Athletic. Johnny Krasinski is coming up.